before you continue do make sure you hit the like button as well as the subscribe button so guys welcome back and right now let's go ahead and start building our back end api i'm going to make a directory called node api so i'm going to switch to that node api so the first thing we have to do is to initialize our package so i'm just going to uh, put down yes yes and we are going to give this node.js back end for amazon app and our entry point is going to be server.js you can just allow this allow this allow this and we're just going to put down your name then we can just specify this to be MIT and click on yes. So that will lead us to opening our project folder as a whole. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to click on this code. Sorry, just type down code there, not click on the code. So that opened our previous uh, VS code. Let me just go ahead and close that as well. And uh, you can just make this to look proper. Inside there, oh, you didn't actually open it perfectly. So I think something is blocking that. I can close this one, yeah. So we don't actually need that one. Close everything here. So inside this node application, we're going to create a file called server.js. And let me open back our uh, command line 2. I'm going to make a directory called the config because you're going to be making use of config. I'm going to also make a directory called middleware where we are going to create our middlewares routes. And I think that's it for now. And let's go ahead and install the packages that we're going to be working with. So the first one, as we all know, is the express. Then after the express, we can install the uh, config, the crypt for password hashing. Bcrypt.js, then we have .mv for our environment variable reading. Okay, we've installed Express. Then we can install the JSON web token. And we can install Moments and also Mongoose. And we can install Mortar. But for this Mortar, maybe as we proceed more further in the future of this, of this video, we are going to make use of this Mortar, but let's leave it for now. Then we can install the UUID. And oh, that is supposed to be inside the node API. So let's go ahead and install that. I'm just going to hit enter. And lastly, we are going to install two more dependencies. So I'm just going to install the Morgan. The Okay, for the concurrently, we don't need it now because we are now dealing with the web. Of course, we can merge it together, like running our application and our backend in the same directly, but let's just leave that. We can install Nodemon for auto reload and we can put the D flag for uh, to install it as dev dependencies. So let's just give that some couple of seconds. So that will lead us to coming over to our server.js. So for the server.js, we are going to start creating everything that we need right here. So I'm just going to bring down Express, which is going to require Express. So let me go ahead and close this. I'm just going to bring down Mongoose because we are going to be using Mongo, uh, MongoDB database. Then we have to bring down the config. So this config is where we are going to be, it's going to enable us to store our key code for JSON web token as well as uh, store our MongoDB database. Then for this one, it's going to require config. Then we have the Morgan. We also have the dot .env. So let's go ahead and uh, import that respectively. So it's require Morgan. So Morgan helps us to log uh, every request on dev development. On the development mode, I mean, then we have the dot .env. We are going to create our app, which is the express. And we are going to specify something called the body parser. So let me just make this proper body parser. Middleware. And it's going to 
uh, sorry, make use of the app.use express.json. Of course, you can specify more. Well, for now, let's just stick to express.json. As time goes on during the improvement, we are going to add more. Then we have uh, loading environmental variables, load env, which is going to use the dot env. And that will lead us to creating a file called uh, config. So, but let's just go ahead and specify the part of that file called config.env. So I'm just going to create that file shortly. Then we have connecting to our database. So I'm just going to show you how we can set up a MongoDB and then get a string and connect that to our database. So before uh, connecting to the database, why don't we just go ahead and create our port. So our port is going to be coming from the process.environmentalvariables.port or we can just use 5000 in case we don't have any port. Then we can just say app.listing which is going to accept the port and we're going to uh, call back which is going to uh, just tell us something like uh, console.log server started on ports then we can bring down our ports so let's go ahead and create a file called config.env so for the config.env is where we can store let's say our ports we can just use the pause here to be 5000 and we can set the node EMV to be development. So let me just close this. So guys, do not forget to hit the like button and also the subscribe button. So we want to log, make use of this small gun that we brought uh, at the top there. So the way we can do that, uh, let's just say, log routes actions so the way we can use that we can say if the process dot environmental variables dot node as i think node environment is equal to development which means it will not be, uh, be making use of this in the production mode uh, let's say when it's working online we can use this morgan middleware so that will just uh, make us use Morgan Dev. So let's save that. And I think that is it for now, except for connecting to our MongoDB. And lastly, we also have to come over to the config folder, create a file called default.json. Inside these files, we are going to just bring down a JSON object. Uh, it's going to let's specify our uh, mongo uri link which we are going to grab shortly and also specify our amazon secret for our json web token so let's just say amazon secret so here you can put anything you can just put random text or random number but let's just make it simple so it's going to be amazon secret so any code you are using here of course you don't actually need to have it by heart you can just put it down but just make sure it's secured because anyone that have access to this code can actually have access to your data in json web token server then they can use that data to do whatever they want to do but let's go ahead and save this and let's now uh, go over to our packet.json now inside here we have to uh, delete this text and specify for our server. Our server is going to be making use of the node mon server. And also we have to specify for the start, which is just node server. And let's go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and run our application. So we can just can just say uh, node mon server. It says that node mon is not recognized. Sorry, npn run server. So that will make use of the node mon to actually run our server. And once it starts successfully, it's going to tell us that server started successfully. So no configurations found in config. So we should have 
this configuration is available. So for the config, let's kind of uh, make use of our database over here. So I think let's kind of check the DB. Let's see whether this is going to grab. Okay, it's going to config.get. We have the Mongo URI and let's kind of consider log DB. So if this works correctly, we should get that DB variable. So the error still exists. Property is not defined. No configurations found. And I think because this is not in this node API. So that is the issue. Let's move this middleware as well. And I think we should save and restart our server. So let's check and that error goes away. So that has solved it. We don't have any error again. So that's how we can actually make use of config. So right now, the next thing we have to do is to connect our Mongo database so that we can actually notify the user that uh, the developer that the database is connected whenever the server starts. So come over to mongodb.com and register for an account. Then you can create a cluster. So when you create a, cl a cluster uh, successfully, you're going to be fixed with something similar to this, although it's going to be totally different from this. But the right there, you're going to see the connect and the configurations. So click on the connect and we are going to be uh, connecting with our MongoDB application. So over here, you can see we have our connect, but before then you have to create a database. So once you create a new cluster, you're going to see something called the database assets, which will help you to create a new database. So I'm not going to create one. So when you create a database, you can you will specify a password and uh, confirm that password, the user and the password. So that user and the password is what you're going to be using as an administrator and also the password for your node server. So going back to this cluster, you have to click on connect, then connect your application. There are two types of connecting, three types of connect, but we are not going to touch this one. So we're going to be using connect for MongoDB Compass. So I would suggest that you download MongoDB Compass and just copy this string. Then you have to put your username and password. Then for, for the normal connection with our node application, we are going to be using this. So this is the one I'm going to grab. So for this cluster, once this uh, video finishes, I'm going to delete it. So even if you make use of it, it's not going to yield anything. So I'm just going to come over to our node application. Inside this config, I'm going to come to this node uh, uh, Mongo URL. So I think I didn't do this properly. So here I'm using, I think I'm using Amazon one, two, three, four, five. And also here we are using the database called Amazon. So that's how we can uh, use the connection strings. And let's go ahead and go back to server.js. So the next thing we have to do now is to connect our database. So let me just make this properly, connect DB. And for the connect DB, it's going to use the mongoose.connect. So the first parameter it, has, it accepts is the URI string. Then it's going to accept some couple of uh, options, I mean. So we have to use the new URL parser to true. We have to use create index to true. Use unification. I think use unified topology, yeah, to true. So if you don't do most of these things, you are going to encounter an error. So if you encounter an error telling you to specify something, you just have to come over here and do that. Then we have the use find and modify to, let's set this to false. Then it's going to return a callback. And you can just console.log Mongo DB is connected. And we also have to catch 
an error in case we have an error you can just console.log that error so I don't know why I'm making this mistake and here we can get rid of that one so let's go ahead and save and see whether this will connect perfectly uh, we should actually get something that tells us it connects okay we are having an error here because it says authentication failed so I'm making a mistake on the authentication so let me go ahead and check my username and password so I had to correct my username and password and automatically you can see MongoDB is connected so let me go ahead and close that and close okay we don't have to close this close package or JSON so right now we are done connecting everything the next thing we have to do is now create our route for our endpoints so I'm just going to use routes so the first one is going to be the alt routes you have the alt routes so for the alt routes you can make use of api slash users then we can require a file we are going to create shortly and that will lead us to creating a, a folder called let me create a folder first called routes so inside this we are going to create a, a file called users js so before we come over there we can just go over to routes slash users we also have to create one more route called uh, for the authentication like for the login we can just uh, let's just put this to login and make this or uh, let's leave this for users so let me just comment this out we are still going to come back to make use of this one and let's go ahead and save that so in case we have any error we are going to encounter a crash okay we already have an error because we have to define some things over here which is going to require express const router which is going to accept the router from express and we can export the default router and here we can now perform some operations so the first one is, is going to be a post request route so it's going to take use of the router.post which is a request and a response and there we can just grab that so I think that error should disappear and you can see our application is running perfectly. So we've successfully connected our MongoDB, connected our ExpressJS and everything seemed to be working perfectly. So in next part, we are now going to go over to registration and we can be able to register a user, then return the token, store those token in our mobile device, then use this token for any request that we want to make, like to log in or to add products to our application. So thank you for watching and do make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. So guys, in case you wish to support me or buy me a coffee, you're going to see a link in the description. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next part.